three reasons most of you are never going to be rich. One, you do not identify opportunity. The opportunity we are discussing now, which happened on the 12th of March, where I bought 600 grand of Bitcoin, which is now worth in excess of 7 million. I've done zero work, zero. I've turned 600K into 7 million just because I identified an opportunity. It took me 10 minutes. You're th sitting out there thinking, if I just had a million, if I could just become a millionaire, that's how easy it is. Now, you probably didn't have 600K to buy Bitcoin like I did. Fine. You could have put 600 in and had 70 grand. 70,000 you could have had from 600. But you do not identify opportunities. This is the first thing you do not do. You do not pay attention to the world around you. You just live in your little bubble. You're too busy arguing with your ugly girlfriend, too busy stressed out about some dumb shit, too busy sleeping in. You don't pay attention. You're not perspicacious. This is why you miss opportunities. It's the first reason you're never going to be rich. The second reason you're never going to be rich is that everything that is taught and told about wealth creation is outdated. Your parents' idea of how to generate wealth no longer works. Your parents say, just work hard, save your money, put it in a savings account, and then get a mortgage, and then you can pay off the house. All garbage. That stuff doesn't work anymore. Back when your parents were doing that, the savings account gave them six, 7% interest. Now you don't even get 1%. Pay off the house. How much, how much cheaper was a house in relation to their wages then than it is now? It's insane. If you actually try and make money by just putting money in a savings account and getting a mortgage and paying off the mortgage, you're gonna be broke until you're 60. And that's not getting rich. You need to be rich when you're young and sexy like me, not when you're old. Because nobody cares about the old dude in the Lambo, they care about the young dude in the Lambo. So everything you've been told and taught about wealth creation is outdated and wrong. The key to wealth creation, everything has changed, the whole game has changed. And I even say to people all the time, the ones I mentor and coach, don't buy a house rent a house. They're like, oh, but isn't that wasting money? No, what's wasting money is buying a house, giving huge interest rates to a fucking bank, and then tying yourself to one geographical location. The reason humans are the number one species on the planet is because of our adaptability, the ability to adapt. I can go anywhere on earth. I can go wherever the money is, where the money resides. If the money's residing in Japan, I can go to Japan. If I need to go to Singapore, I can go to Singapore. I can go live in Los motherfucking Vegas. Wherever I'm going to get paid, I can go and I'll just rent, 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 rent. Boom, boom, boom. I ain't got nothing tying me down. It ain't going to take years for me to buy or sell something. I ain't got to worry about all the upkeep and property maintenance. Buying a house is foolish. Now, I'm not going to lie. I do own this house because I wanted it to be exactly the way I want it. But I'm rich, rich, right? You aren't. So you shouldn't be doing that shit anyway. You do not need to buy a house. It's one of the biggest mistakes you can make. It's a psychological thing that your parents have told you. If you own a home, if you own a home, if you own a home. And then I tell people this and they go, oh yeah, but you can always rent it out. You're gonna spend 300,000 on a house so that you can rent out for 800 a month. And then every time the boiler breaks, you're gonna spend 500 fixing the boiler and they're gonna damage your house. And by the time they leave, you're gonna need a whole bunch of repairs and they're gonna be calling you all the time for hassle and stress if they even pay their rent on time. You think that's a good spend of 300 grand? Do you know what else you could do with 300 grand? Buy Bitcoin. Revolutionary. Your real estate can be on the blockchain instead of out here. Because when it's on the blockchain, it can be sold instantly. You ever tried to sell a house? Takes years. Ever tried to sell Bitcoin? Takes seconds. So this is the second reason you're never gonna be rich. Because all your ideas and concepts of how wealth is created are outdated. Three, the third and most important reason you're never gonna be rich is because you do not have a plan. You do not have a plan to get rich. Nothing good has ever happened on accident. Have you ever met a guy who's just got covered in muscle? He's got a six pack. You're like, hey bro, how'd you do that? You've been going to the gym. No, nah, man, I'm just, it was just an accident. Was, oops. No, he built that body purposefully. He did things specifically to get the result he desired. He ate a specific way. He trained a specific amount. He knew exactly what he was doing. Every rich person knows exactly what they're doing. People who are making money know exactly how to do it. You're sitting there saying, I want to be rich. You don't even have a plan to get rich. How the fuck are you going to get rich on accident? How's that going to happen? Oops, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> Never. So one, you do not pay attention to opportunities and crisis. Two, everything you understand about wealth creation is outdated and wrong. And three, you do not have a plan. In the year 2022, if you still can't figure out how to make money, shame on you.
One of the big issues why people do not change their identity or their money beliefs is because they believe the money is scarce, when quite frankly, it's not. When you believe money is scarce, you try to hoard it. And the issue is when you try to pull something in by force, it just pushes it away. Instead of trying to pull in money by force, instead, you must attract it. You've been taught your entire life, you know, money is this very scarce item, so you have to be very careful around it and all this stuff when unequivocally that's not true. All you need to do is look at the money printing they've been doing the past couple years. And by the way, past few years have been exaggerated. It's still been going on for a hundred years now. You know, I say this all the time, but look at the inception of the Federal Reserve. You know, understand where does money come from? That hundred dollar bill that you're holding, who created that? Was it the government? Because it wasn't the government, but look into it. So we live in this world where you've got private investors that own the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve then gets to print money that the government borrows. And then the best part is a lot of that flows to the banks. So you've got this funny money that's backed by nothing. And the best part is then it gets sent to the banks where they use something called fractional reserve banking, which means they only need to hold a reserve. A tiny fraction of those funds need to be held in reserve. So then they can take that funny money and multiply it many, many times over. The reason I say all this to you is to prove that money is not scarce because they print it and it's backed by nothing. It's valueless. Only value is is the perception, the mental perception that you've put around it. So when you start to realize the world's monetary system as we know it, then it becomes very easy to understand that money is not scarce. Money is abundant and they have proven that it's infinite. So what you need to do is hate the game or play the game. Make a bunch of this money, this fake fiat currency, and then go put it into tangible real assets. You know, if you look at it, quite frankly, the world's monetary system is kind of like imagine a parallel universe and all of the elites and leaders in the parallel universe collected all the sand in the world. And the sand is backed by nothing. You can't really do anything with the sand. The sand doesn't have too much use, but they convinced all of the little peasants that one little grain of sand is worth a lot. And the entire economy ran on these little grains of sand, even though they're kind of useless, you can't really do much with them. All it is, is just the belief that that little grain of sand is worth something or can buy you something. But what happens when the curtain falls? Falls, the show is over and people realize the sand is worthless. They've been lied to this entire time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world's financial system in the next 5, 10, 15 years, which is why if you know how to do things right over the next decade or so, you can collect all of this funny money and then buy real tangible things with it, things that have actual value to them. So that's the next reason you're poor is because you have not educated yourself on what is money, where has it come from, the monetary system as we know it. And unfortunately, the byproduct to that is you have this anxiety about money. You think that money is scarce when quite frankly, it's not. Now in this world, there are the people who create and those that consume and the people who consume things pay the ones and make the ones who create things very rich. So you need to understand that you are always paying someone in one of two currencies, attention or money. And ultimately attention and money both usually end up to the person who has managed to get that from you, eventually making money in some form or fashion. You need to understand that you are poor because you do not create anything. You simply consume and you will not become rich in life until you create something that the market consumes whether that be a service, whether that be a product, whatever it may be, create value and others will consume it in return for money. You know, and this also goes for sort of your online footprint, this idea of creator versus consumer. You need to understand that you are consumers on YouTube, you are consumers on TikTok. And by the way, there's no issues with that. Bear in mind, when I have 10 or 15 minutes to eat a nice meal, I usually sit down and I watch a YouTube video. So there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But the issue is most of you guys are spending three, four hours a day on TikTok over consuming. So if it is applicable to your goals, you know, for some of you watching this, you may not actually want to be entrepreneurs. I know some of you watching this, you know, you work in great jobs and, you know, having a social media presence and creating online doesn't really, you know, contribute to you working up through the company and eventually becoming, let's say, the COO or the CMO at your company. So if that's the case, delete all of these stupid apps off your phone, delete Instagram, delete TikTok. They have zero use to you. But if it's applicable to what you want to do in life, then start creating alongside consuming. So just remember the last reason that you are poor is because you are way too far into the consumer field rather than being a creator, either digitally or in terms of what you're actually creating. Whatever area that you get into, um, given that, you know, even if you're, if you're the best, the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Uh, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. Um, you know, I, I'd say, if, if, and, and also, if, if, you, if you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, you're, it'll just, it, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you, you just really can't make it work, I think. When you had that third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. 
starting a business, I'd say number one is have a high pain threshold. <laughs> That's it.、Um, there's a friend of mine who's got a good saying, which is that starting a company is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Okay, that's、um, that's generally what happens because、um, when you first start a company, there's lots of optimism and things are things are great, and then so happiness at first is high. Then you encounter all sorts of issues,、uh, and happiness will steadily decline, <laughs> and then you'll go through a whole world of hurt. <laughs> that's and then eventually, you'll if you succeed, and in most cases you will not succeed,、um, and and Tesla almost. Didn't succeed. Came very close to failure.、Um, then, if, if you succeed, then after a long time, you will finally get back to happiness. <laughs> I think two is you got to make sure that that you that whatever you're doing is a great product or service. It, it has to be really great. And I go back to what I was saying earlier, where、um, if you're a new company, I mean, unless it's like some new industry or or new market that. If it's an untapped market, or then, then、uh, you have more ability to. You, this, this, the standard is lower for your product or service. But if you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer. And they say, "Why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always going to buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference." So, a lot of times,、uh, you know, entrepreneur will come up with something which is only slightly better,、um, and it's it's not it can't just be slightly better. It's got to be a lot better.、Uh, number three, I'd say, is constantly seek criticism.、Yeah. Uh, a a well a well thought Our critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold,、um, and you should seek that from everyone you can, but particularly your friends.、Um, usually, your friends know what's wrong, but they don't want to tell you because they don't want to hurt you.、Um, so, lift you up, so you're, yeah, yeah. So they, you know, they say, "Oh, I wouldn't encourage my friends, so I'm not going to tell him what I think is wrong with this product."、Yeah. It doesn't mean your friends are right,、uh, but very often they are right,、um, and you at least want to listen very carefully to what they say. And to everyone, if you're looking for basically, you, you should take the approach that that you're wrong,、um, you know, that 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 you, the entrepreneur, are wrong. Your goal is to be less wrong. <laughs>